Hi, I'm Joel Persinger from Practical Defense Systems. I wanted to talk to you about the Berna Pepperball Launcher. No, this is not an ad. No, they did not send me a free Berna. I bought it. So I want to give you a real pros and cons look at the thing. We're not going to go shoot it. I just want to talk with you. To be honest, I've been trying to figure out where is it useful and where is it not. So I've made a big list. I actually had a nice conversation with my wife, my daughter, some students, um, some folks on social media, or on various social media platforms we're on, just to get the ideas, why are civilians necessarily buying them? Because I originally thought law enforcement, security, or whatever. So I figure I'll give you some pros and cons here on the thing. This is the one I bought. Is the uh, I got this at the P2K range. I was there teaching a concealed carry course. Somebody was looking at them, and I thought, that's kind of interesting, and I'd gotten... The truth is I get a lot of questions about the things, and students ask me all the time, so I thought I'd get one. So I bought this one. This is the Berna SD, I think is what they call it. It's a civilian version. They make a law enforcement version. It's a little bit longer. This one takes the uh, diminutive CO2 cartridges, and it comes in a kit, and the kit has five rounds of various different types of ammunition. There's pepper slash... Pava, so it's got OC in it and Pava. They make another version that they say is worse with OC and CS mace. Having been exposed to both, I can say that probably would be terrible. And then this is for practice. They're biodegradable, so if you shoot them in your yard, uh, they'll just degrade. And then they have the hard plastic ones that are polymer, sort of like a rubber bullet kind of a thing, meant to be painful, pain compliance only. And then it does come with two magazines, five rounds each. All right, so there you go. That's the, uh, that's the gun, so I'll show it to you again. And I did get the orange and black one because, given what I do for a living and given my history, I like less lethal to look like less lethal. They do make them in black and coyote and different things like that, but I thought, now I really don't want to have a less lethal tool that looks like a gun. If I'm going to draw a gun, I'll draw a gun. That's not a problem. I can do that. But if I have something that's less lethal, I want it to be less lethal, and I want it to look less lethal. That's my opinion about these. If it were me, I would not buy one, I, and I did not. I would not buy one that looks like a real gun. I could have. That was an option. In fact, I was going to buy the law enforcement version, but the only color the law enforcement version came in, it comes in other colors, but the only one they had at the P2K range was black. And I thought, no, I'm not doing that. I'll buy the SD version because that one is obviously less lethal. And by the way, a less lethal tool is not non-lethal. That's different. It's just less lethal. It still has the potential of lethality. So you want to treat it that way. All right, here's pros and cons for you. I wrote a bunch of them down. Um, so let's talk about for security first. Security guards, I think it's a very good tool. It's actually very well made. I haven't fired it yet, but just looking at it, I just picked it up uh, yesterday after I got done with a concealed carry course. So I haven't had a chance to fire it yet. But here's some things. First of all, you get some greater range out of that than you're going to get out of a can of pepper spray. It's just not going to, pepper spray is not going to go as far. I think the other thing is that it has more versatility of ammunition because you have not just a couple of different types of, of uh, OC or chemical agent. You have the pepper and pava, but you also have the pepper with the CS mace, <coughs> excuse me, which is supposed to be even worse, and I imagine it is. Uh, CS Mace is miserable. I've been through that already in the gas, you know, in the gas house and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure you may have too, some of you. All right, and, and then it's also a visible deterrent. I think if you have, if you're carrying that, and you are an otherwise unarmed guard, having that would be a visible deter deterrent. In the same way that having a taser, I think, would be a bit more of a visible deterrent. And and as opposed to tasers. Here's the problem. Tasers are really positive for law enforcement because they allow law enforcement to get somebody under control for a brief period where they get neuromuscular incapacitation, NMI. Person can't move, and then another officer can get them in custody because now they're immobilized. That's the purpose of a taser. Immobilize that person for a brief period, get another officer to get them in custody. Security officers not necessarily trying to get people in custody. So unless you have a security job where you are hooking people up, you're probably just wanting to stop violence or get distance or separate yourself from the situation. That's why I think OC is generally a better tool for security guards in most cases. Well, this is, is taking your OC and lifting it up quite a level because 
you've got more distance, so you've got more standoff. You can get farther away, you can still have an effect on the obnoxious person or the dangerous person. And at the same time, you're not connected to them like, like you are with a taser. Taser only lasts five seconds, and at the end of that, if I've never been tased, I'm gonna tell you from personal experience, at the end of that five seconds, you're 100%. You're locked up until the electricity stops flowing, and then you're up and you're going. This is not the case. When you are under the effects of OC or any chemical agent and it has really, you're susceptible to it, not somebody that's immune or somebody that's high or drunk or whatever. If you're, if you're susceptible to it, you're susceptible to it for quite a while, not just five seconds. So it gives the guard a chance to back away, get away. So I think it has more effect there. Uh, you also have the combined effect of the chemical as well as the impact that is like a rubber bullet. So rather than just, you know, you're getting tased and you're lit up for five seconds and you're popping up again, you have that combined blunt trauma effect, which is painful. And then you also have, which lasts, it doesn't go away for a while. And then you also have the effect of the chemical. And then you're not connected to the bad guy with wires, where with a taser, you have to stay connected and you have to press the trigger again after five seconds if you want it to go again. And then likewise, uh, it's, it's more than one shot. With a taser, it's a one-shot deal, most tasers, or even a phaser, the, com the, the company that they compete with. Either way, it doesn't matter. You got one shot, that's it. Then you got to disconnect the cartridge, put another cartridge in. But if you disconnect the cartridge from the, from the unit, the electricity stops, that person is now 100%. You're trying to load another one to get the other guy. You can't do that. This is why law enforcement, when they deploy less lethal, almost without exception will have a cover officer that has a lethal tool. They have a weapon out, handgun, rifle, shotgun, whatever, and that's the lethal officer in case less lethal does not work or in some way fails and the suspect gets up and comes after you or in case another suspect comes in. Where there's one, there's always another one. Where there's two, there's always another one. There's always another one until there isn't. And then this gives you a crowd control component that you're not going to get out of a can of OC. You would get it from bear spray or a large can of OC, but a little can of OC is not going to help you with crowd control where this might. All right, let's move on to civilians. Here's some pros for civilians. Some folks maybe can't buy a firearm or they can't own a gun. So if you're under 21 years of age in the state of California, you can't buy a handgun. And, and I don't even think you can buy a long gun anymore under 21. You have to have somebody get it for you. And so since you can't buy one yet, you can buy this because it's not considered a firearm. If you're a prohibited person, you can't buy a firearm or own one or be around one. I don't know if a prohibited person could buy this, but it might be possible. So if you have a criminal history that you've overcome your life and changed your life, and you want a tool, you might be able to buy one of these. I don't know. Check the legal aspects of that. There's no waiting period in California to buy this. It's not considered a firearm, so you pay your money, you walk out the door, that's a pro. Some people don't want to use deadly force. They refuse to do so. It's repugnant to them. This is an option for that person. Um, it's a step up from pepper spray, as I mentioned, because you got the versatility of ammo. If you don't want to use pepper, you're in an enclosed space, you can use the hard polymer balls are like like rubber balls they're just not rubber they're polymer and they're freighting out of this thing at 350 feet per second they're really really going to hurt no i'm not going to shoot myself with it if you want to find out what those look like there's lots of videos you can go look at where people have knuckleheads have shot each other with them i'm not going to do that um, i've already been hit with sims and other things and and oc to death and cs to death i don't need to demonstrate it you can watch it on other videos if you want Again, you got greater range, same kind of things, right? It has a combined effect with the pepper balls. It has a combined effect of the chemical and the impact. Um, it might be a, an adjunct to or an option other than concealed carry in a state like California, where getting a concealed carry permit right now in many places takes about a year. So if you're concerned that your safety is being compromised now, and you want something that's a step up from just carrying a can of OC, this might be an option for you because you could carry it immediately depending on where you are. Don't assume it's legal to do that. Check with your local municipality because even in California, it might be legal in California. The company says it is, but I don't know that. But different places may have different local ordinances against it, so your mileage may vary. You're gonna to have to find out what you're legally able to do in the area that you're in. So make sure that you're doing that. 
And then, uh, let's see, I covered that. Um, some places, you may have a concealed carry permit, but some places may not allow you to take the gun. You may have an employer that won't allow you to take the gun, but might allow you to have something like this. Like maybe you work for a private school or you're trying to bring something to church. The church doesn't want firearms, but you could bring that, have it in a fanny pack or something like that because it's pretty big, not easy to conceal. Or your delivery driver and the company you work for, you're driving their vehicle, won't let you have a gun, but they might let you have that in the delivery truck. Or your truck driver, you're driving somebody else's truck, might have that in the truck. Or you're a store clerk. Truck driver might have that, maybe that's legal in all the states that driver goes to, but maybe the concealed carry permits that driver has are not legal in some of those states. So this would be, again, an adjunct to your concealed carry. So there's, there's some options there. I mentioned crowd control. Honestly, if you're concerned about civil unrest in your neighborhood or something like that as a citizen, bear spray is just cheaper and would probably have similar effect. You can get a can of bear spray for 50 bucks. This thing's going to cost you 400. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, but it would work. You know, you, you hit people with pepper balls. I've seen it. It's not pleasant. And a lot of times for most of those folks, just the pain of the impact is enough. Not always, but sometimes. But when you combine the OC, that does have an effect. And remember, a lot of times these rioters and protesters, they come prepared for OC because they're used to law enforcement using it. So they've got a mask or a bandana or some sort of something to cover their eyes or whatever. Or they'll turn around and turn their back to the officer just as he goes to spray them so that the, the OC sprays on the back of their head as opposed to in their eyes where they want it to be. And so they're, they're kind of prepared for that. All right, here's the cons. The thing I mentioned, it's expensive. This sucker costs 400 bucks you know, by the time you pay tax, right? And then the ammunition is ridiculously expensive. It's well over $100 for 25 rounds. So the ammo is very, very expensive. Uh, if you compare it again to pepper spray, you want to carry a can of pepper spray instead of that, you can get a can of pepper spray for 10 to $15. And it's not nearly as expensive. And a bear spray, 46, 48 bucks, 35 bucks online. Um, it's big, it's big, it's not heavy but it's just bulky and big. It's, it's thick and it's big. And so concealing that in the Pacific Southwest where it's warm and I mean, the sun's out, right? So I don't know that anybody's gonna conceal that except off body. They're gonna have that in sort of a fanny pack or something or a backpack or whatever, which makes it slower to get to. So concealing it, I'm not seeing people doing that, um, but you could, it's just really big. In California, in order to buy the pepper, you can get the hard plastic balls, but in order to get the, anything that has a chemical in it, you have to complete a California Security Guard chemical agent course. It's not hard. You can do it on our website for $34.95, but you're out another $35. Bucks. So you can see you paid $400 for the unit, pay $100 for the ammo if you want more than five shots, and so 100 and something. So now you're 500 and something, 550 probably, by the time you get shipping and everything else, just for ammo and gun. And then you've had to pay to take a class you're out the better part of $600. I don't know if you have to have a guard registration card, a guard card in California. You might, I, I don't know. And if you have to have that, now you gotta take a course for that. Then you gotta apply with the state. You gotta wait for it to show up. That could take two weeks to two months and you're out another hundred bucks. So now you're $600 into this thing. So the cost is not small. And I think it surprised me. I bought the unit, then I went to go buy ammo online. And I was like, holy smoke them. <laughs> wow, seriously? And so, you know, that's, that's an issue there. And then Berna says these are legal in all 50 states. Boy, I don't know that I would make that assumption. You got states like California with all these local ordinances and county ordinances. You got very restrictive states, New York, New Jersey, whatever. Don't assume that because it's on a company website, these are legal everywhere, that they're legal everywhere. Because they're not. I wanted to buy just some accessories and the ammo and like that. They would not ship that to California. I had to ship it to our Arizona office, and then I got to go out there and get it and drive it back because they wouldn't ship it to California. So that tells me that maybe their statement that it's legal everywhere is not exactly accurate. I would not make that assumption. And then less lethal, uh, as I mentioned, is not a guarantee any more than anything else is. It doesn't always work, and that's why law enforcement and security always have that, that lethal backup officer to use it with them. So you could use this, for example, for home defense and you could just load the plastic balls because you surely do not want to launch pepper ball inside your house or inside any enclosed area because that's going to be miserable for a really, really long time for everybody in the house, including you. 
So now you're, you're down to the hard plastic balls and you're hoping that pain only is going to stop that individual. I've put a lot of people in jail. I've bailed a lot of people out of jail as a bail bondsman. I was a security contractor. So I can tell you some folks are not impressed by pain. They will keep coming after you no matter how much it hurts, either because they're highly motivated, they have a high threshold of pain, or they're high on something, or they're drunk, or whatever. And so pain does not always stop a person. That's why law enforcement tends to use tasers, because neuromuscular incapacitation locks you up, and it's not something, even though it hurts, if you could fight through the pain, you can't control your muscles because the taser has overridden your control of them. But again, you have to have a good deployment, four inches apart, both probes have to have a good deployment. If you get one that doesn't, it's just pain compliance. Criminals have learned to wave their hands and try to break the wires. You only have one shot, so if you're dealing with more than one people, so, like I said, it's not a panacea, the taser's not a panacea, and actually the gun's not a panacea, and this isn't a panacea. You have to understand the pros and cons. So hopefully that helps. If you have questions, throw them in the comments. If I can get to them, the only place I'm going to be able to look at them is in YouTube, uh, X, and Rumble. If it's on a different platform, I'm not going to see them there. You can also send me an email if you want. You can send it to info at pdsclasses.com, I-N-F-O at pdsclasses.com, and I'll see it there. I hope this helped you, and hopefully it answered the 37 questions I seem to get every week about the burnout.